Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. I'm Miss Amy and today we're going to do this fun, colorful, watercolor nature uh, project, painting project. So let's go over some supplies you'll need to, to do this project today. First of all, you will need some watercolor paper. I recommend watercolor paper, paper that says it can be used for watercolor. Uh, regular paper just is too thin and won't handle the watercolor very well. So you want to make sure you have the paper and then your um, painting will turn out properly also. You will need a cup of water, a paintbrush. I'm using a round paintbrush, medium size, about size six. Um, if you have a flat brush, that's okay too. That will work. Um, your paint tray of paints, a paper towel, and some Sharpies for the last thing. And if you oh, and a hair dryer if you want to dry your picture quickly. Um, you can just let it air dry and then come back to it. But for this video, I want it to dry quickly so I can create all of it for you with you. And so if you do decide to use a hair dryer, please get a parent's help and permission to. Um, if you're older and have used one, you should be just fine. But make sure it's okay with your parents before you use that. All right, so let's get started today. We're going to do the overhead shot there. We're going to put our paper in uh, portrait direction. And we're only going to use three colors of our paint today. See in this one, there's more than three colors, but we're going to create those by mixing some colors today. So we're going to start, uh, we're going to use just our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. So I want to paint strips on here with some spaces in between that are blank. So I'm going to start and I'm going to do a wet on wet watercolor technique. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my brush wet and I'm just going to paint some water across my paper. I'm going to leave a little spot at the top and then just paint some water across my paper. It does not have to be perfectly straight because I don't think the sky is always perfectly straight. We want it to look natural. And if it's perfectly straight, it won't look natural. Make sure you got lots of water. I have fans blowing today, so it's really warm outside. So I'm mine might dry kind of quickly. So I just want to make sure I've got plenty of water on there. And then I'm going to get um, my brush wet and swirl it in the red. Gently swirl, but make sure you get lots of paint on your brush. And then I'm just going to touch it to the water. And then I'm going to kind of push it around and make sure it fills all that water. But it doesn't have to look. It can kind of have its own look. because It kind of moves around in the water where it wants to. And I like that. I think that looks more natural and very cool. So I'm just going to kind of push it around, tap it on there, and then push it around. I just like that. I like how that looks. Do the same over here. Now normally in watercolor, we tape down our paper on the edges to hold it flat. Um, for this project, we're not going to mess with that unless you want to. If you want to do that, you can take some masking tape and tape the edges down. To your tabletop or to a board um, just to keep it flat but what I what you can do also is after it's completely dry you can put something heavy on it to help flatten it out a little bit too so there's my red it looks really cool so I'm going to clean my brush really well and when I clean my brush I'm going to just swirl it around the bottom like I'm mixing chocolate milk try and get that chocolate off the bottom gently though because I don't want to ruin my brush and then wipe it on my paper towel make sure that there's no red paint coming off on, on my paper towel and then i'm ready for my next primary color which would be yellow so i'm going to swirl it around in the yellow and then oops you know what i forgot to do i forgot to add some water first since we're doing wet on wet so i'm going to leave a blank i'm going to leave a little blank spot there and then i'm going to do another a swash of water it doesn't have to be perfectly straight so 
So I'm gonna put a bunch of water there and then add my yellow in there. Now I can get some yellow paint on my brush and put it right in there. I'm gonna tap it on there and then spread it around so it fills all that wet area. It's okay if you have some lighter and darker areas of your colors because to me that looks more like the sky. It looks more natural. There we go. So all my water is filled up there. Now I'm going to skip a little section, keep it white, and I'm going to put water on my paper. And this time I'm going to spread my water all the way to the bottom of my paper. So wipe on a bunch of paint, water. As you notice, I'm not even wiping the water off my brush. So I want to keep my brush loaded with water so I get plenty of water on my paper. And I'm doing that extra today too because it's drying really fast here. All right, so then I'm going to swirl my paintbrush in my blue. Oh, that's a pretty blue. Yeah. And I'm going to tap, tap it and spread it so it fills up all that water. Wherever I put my water, I want that to be filled up with that blue. So I'm tapping it and spreading it. It's, like I said, it's okay if you have some dark areas and lighter areas. To me, it looks more realistic more like the sky. All right. Fill that in. So all that water is filled in now. There we go. So I'm going to clean my brush. And now I'm going to go up here to start at the top again. And so I'm going to that blank area. So we have our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So what we're going to do in between these is mix those together to get some secondary colors. And so at the top, we're going to paint just plain water on that white space and go ahead and you can go down into your red a little bit, no problem. Because you actually, when we add our colors here, we want it to blend a little bit anyway. So you can go ahead and even put some water down into your red just a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit more red on here. Just a little bit in here. I'm not going to fill the whole area with red. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to get some, take my blue from the bottom and I'm going to mix some blue in here with that red. And you'll get that secondary color purple. You'll start seeing purple. Um, in those areas, we have enough red and blue mixing together. Now, if it's not really turning purple, you probably need to add one or more of the other colors to get some more. Like there is kind of heavy blue that I just added. So what I'm gonna have to do is add a little more red in there to get more of a purple color that I want. See, right in the middle, it's nice and purple. But on the edges there, I'm gonna add a little more red in just to get there we go. There's some good purple. You kind of just want to mix it together on your paper there. Get a nice purple all across there. Now that one is a little blue, so I'm just going to add a little bit of red in there to make that more purple. So if it's too blue, you add a little more red. If it's too red, you just add a little more blue to get your secondary color. And then what I do with a clean brush, dab off some of that water, I'm just gonna go through and kind of blend that edge there so the colors kind of blend a little bit better. There. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to my red, and make sure I have a clean brush and get some clean water and spread it in between. It's okay to overlap your red a little bit because we kinda of wanna 
get that line blurred out a little bit. And then you're gonna add some clean water and even go into your yellow just a little bit. So, and I'm not brushing hard. I'm just brushing real lightly because I don't want to ruin my brush. If you scribble really hard with your brush, you can ruin the bristles. So I'm just spreading that water around is what I'm doing. So I am not pushing very hard at all on my brush, really lightly. So what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of red because red's such a dark color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red in there. Let it spread around that water. Now I'm gonna take a clean brush and get some yellow and then right on top of that red, mix some of that yellow in there. And you'll start to see the secondary color orange happening there. And the same thing like you did with the purple. If it's too red, add a little more yellow. If it's too yellow, add a little bit more red. Go ahead and mix those together so you get a pretty orange in there. Add just a little bit more red. I add just a little bit at a time. Red's a real dark color compared to yellow, so you often don't need quite as much red as yellow to get a nice orange. And I'm mixing them together with my brush gently, not pushing very hard on my brush. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush really well, wipe off the extra water, and just paint over the edges there, kind of blend those in a little bit. water. There we go. And then let me do the same with the yellow here. With some plain water to kind of blend that. All right. So then between my yellow and my blue, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to put plain water up into my blue a little bit, or I'm sorry, up into my yellow a little bit. And then more plain water down into my blue a little bit. That's a good. You'll see the edges kind of disappearing there. That's what I want. Just by adding that water and gently rubbing, gently brushing over that. Okay, now I'm going to add some yellow in first in the middle here. Probably a little bit more yellow because blue is such a darker color. Now I'm going to go back, clean my brush, and add some blue in there. Just a hint of blue. And you'll get this. Our third primary color, it's green. Mixing blue and yellow together gives us a really pretty green. And mix them together right there on the paper. And you do the same thing, the areas where it's a little bit more blue. You might want to add a more yellow in. If you have a lot of yellow, you just add a bit more blue in to get that pretty green how you like it. If you want it to have a little more yellow green or a little more blue green, that's totally up to you. However you would like. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow in there. Just to... That's a pretty green for my sky. Okay, now I'm going to take a clean brush, wipe my extra water off, and go through and just blend the edge in a little bit to my blue there. So it's not such a sharp line here. I want those colors to blend together a little better. There we go. Do the same thing between the yellow and the green. 
kind of blown that edge. So it's not so sharp. I might even add a little bit more yellow in there just because it's such a light color. Add some more water. There, that looks good. All right. So when you have it done, where you like, oh, yeah, ooh, I like that. I like where it's light and a little darker. It makes it look like a real sky. I'm going to set my paint and paintbrush aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry it with my hair dryer. Now rule for drying is you never want to touch the dryer directly on your paper. And you don't want to put your hand in the way because it can get hot. Um, I recommend using it on low. It takes a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to use mine on high just because I need it to dry quickly for this video. Um, but I would recommend you do it on low. Uh, so just go ahead and get it dried. Or you can just wait till it dries naturally in, in the air and then go back um, when it's dry. Completely dry, then we can add our fun silhouettes on there. All right, so that dried very quickly for me, and I'm going to set that aside and get it out of my way. Now I'm going to work on my silhouettes. So hopefully you've got some pictures maybe that you can print out of um, some insects or some flowers. On this one I kind of created some dandelions and a little bumblebee and a dragonfly. And I arranged them so it looks really nice on my paper. I didn't want everything on one side or everything on the other side. You want them kind of balanced. But I don't want to fill this in so full that I can't see my beautiful colors coming through. I want to be able to see the blue and the green and all my colors. So we just want to make sure that we don't overfill our paper, um, that we have some spaces in between. And then if you noticed how I had these ones leaning towards the center and then these ones leaning towards the center, kind of pointing towards the, the, the highest dandelion here and the dragonfly. So it looks nice and balanced and is um, nice to look at. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. You could go ahead and use a pencil to sketch in your, real lightly sketch in your outlines first and then copy them with Sharpie and fill them in with Sharpie. Um, that way if you um, you can make sure you have your lines how you want them before you fill them in because once you draw with a Sharpie it's really hard to, to change those. Um, you can a little bit but not a lot so I recommend doing a pencil first but I've done these several times so I'm going to go ahead and just use my Sharpie and I'm going to start with um, I think I'll start in the middle with my main dandelion first and then add in the sides. So I'm going to kind of in the middle of my paper. I'm just going to make a line that goes up and curve it kind of up into the orangish red area. It's going to be a big dandelion. And then I want to make my stem kind of thick because it needs to hold that dandelion. So now if there's a spot like let's say it's a little bit skinny there and I want to widen it, easy to do with the Sharpie. You just can't go make it skinnier than it was. You can make it wider. Uh, so you can make those changes. And you want it nice and dark, so you want to make sure when you're coloring with your Sharpie that you fill in all the space. So you don't have um, 
your paper showing through. This is an area where I don't want my paper to show through. Now, in the top of the standalone weed, I do want some of my color to show through that, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first I'm gonna start with the center of my dandelion here. So it's like the stem comes up into the center. There's the center. And now I'm gonna create um, my little dandelion seeds around this. I'm just gonna do a straight line out and a little, like a little dot at the end. And I'm just gonna go space them just a little bit as I go around. Now give me room to fill in the other sizes. So I'm just going to go around that whole dot, the, this whole center that I made, and spread them out a little bit. It's okay if they're slightly different sizes because we're going to fill all that in. So now that I've got that size, I'm going to fill it in with a slightly smaller one in between all of those bigger ones. And then I'm going to make some smaller ones even fill in those spaces with the smaller ones and they'll overlap. So you may not see the whole thing, but that's okay. It should be darker kind of around the middle and get lighter and lighter as you go out. pretty cool and I might add a couple more in just to fill in a little bit you could do that just random fill in some spaces they have a lot of seeds those are the fun ones that you blow everywhere spread those dandelion seeds dandelions though are beneficial for bumblebees they're actually a nice flower to have around all right so you see i can see some of that color coming through my dandelion seeds and i might add a couple leaves on here so i'm just going to do a curved line then i'm going to fill it in and make sure when i color my lines are close together i'm not pushing very hard on my sharpie you don't have to push hard on markers to get a nice color unlike oil pastels where you have to push a little harder markers you don't need to you actually get better color if you push lightly. So I'm not touching coloring very hard at all. All right, there's my main one. Now I'm gonna add my other dandelions and actually have flowers. So I'm gonna do one on this side. So I'm gonna kind of lean it in just a little bit, maybe about this big, make my thicker stem so I can hold the flower. Color that in. smooth out that side there there we go and then I'm going to make my flower so where the part comes out and then I'm going to just make the outline of it this is kind of a curvy squiggly line and now I'm just going to fill that in because I'm just seeing the outline of my flower so I don't have to include a lot of detail on that leaves on here leaves usually go right across from each other so that's why I do it that way this sharpie is getting dry all right, and sometimes I'll have, I might add a couple leaves down here to it uh, towards the bottom. It could be another plant or it could be part of the same plant. It's a silhouette, so kind of everything blends together a little bit. Okay, 
So I'm going to draw one more dandelion on this side, but I'm going to kind of make it be a little more interesting, make it kind of come out the side of my paper and lean it over just a little bit, just to make it a little more interesting. But leaning towards, pointing towards that main one that I did, just to make it look nice on my paper. And do the same squiggly line for the outside of the flower and color it in. There. Already it looks nice. It's looking nice and balanced, my picture. I have three main flowers. I like to do odd numbers. So three main flowers. I might have a little leaf sticking out here. And one that you can only partially see on the other side. There we go. And now I want to fill this in with some grass, some grass stems and leaves. So I'm going to do it, and I don't do it perfectly straight because nature is rarely perfectly straight. So um, I'm just going to kind of, there we go. Some grass. And it's okay if you if you color over what you put on there already because it all blends together as a silhouette so it doesn't really matter it's all going to show up and you it'll just look like one thing is in front of another but you really can't tell and i might do some grass here i just want to be careful not to fill in a whole lot i want to really see some of that beautiful sky showing so I just want to do a little bit. And I might make one that's kind of like a seed, has some seed at the top, so. Or a little bit different, so I'm gonna just go whatever you would like to make. There. So I'm gonna do another one of those over here. Maybe a little shorter. A little bit of just like that. And now here I'd like to do one that's slightly different. So I'm gonna maybe it's like another weed or something. So I'm gonna make a stem that comes up this way, still kind of pointing towards that um, main one in the middle, main um, dandelion. So then I'm gonna bake some little different types of leaves on this one and color them in. And on this side. And leaves, they're across from each other, so they're going to be um, right across from each other on the stem. Make sure I fill that all in. all. I might add one more grass in between here, grass stem. I might just do it right here. Just to kind of, and I'm kind of leaning the top towards the center also. There we go. Just to fill that in a little bit, but I don't want to overdo it and put too much in there. Now I'm going to draw a couple insects. I want to draw a little bee by my uh, dandelion there. So I'm just going to do the outline of my bee. Little heavy little body. It's like a big bumblebee. Little thick head. Big thick body. The legs. Remember their legs kind of hang down in the back. They're pretty heavy flying around. I'm going to color it all in because we don't see the detail. A little antenna. And then those little wings. It's amazing those bees can fly they're so their bodies are so big all right and then i'd like to do since i have a little bee here i'm going to add um, 
a dragonfly kind of in the opposite side. So I'm just going to draw the little head of the dragonfly. And that has a thicker body right by the head. And then it has a long, more skinny long tail area. I'm going to fill that all in. Okay, and then they have two wings on each side, so I'm going to draw the wings. And draw the wings on this side also. Now, I would like to, uh, dragonfly wings are real uh, light and you can often kind of see a little bit through them. So I'm just going to draw a line down the middle of each wing. And then I'm going to add some little lines on the side to create that part so it looks like you can see through it a little bit. They're transparent, meaning you can see through it. Opaque means solid, you can't see through it. And transparent means you can see through it. There we go. That looks cool. And there you have it. My beautiful, uh, colorful nature sunset sky, or whatever you would like to call it. So thank you for joining me today for that fun, this fun project. Um, go ahead and you can always send me a picture of your finished project or post it under video. We'd love to see your work. So thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.